And hi, I'm Danielle from John B. And I'm here on behalf of Michael's. So we're going to be teaching you guys um, a really cool design. I'm going to wait a few minutes for everybody to join before I get started. But um, the class is recorded and it will be available on michaels.com slash classes after the broadcast. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat room. We do have everybody on mute just so we can hear each other. And um, if you have questions that they'll ask me during the class, uh, if we can. And um, if you have any um, questions we can't answer, we'll try to get you guys after class. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think that's pretty much all everybody's in. Okay, so today is the um, peyote stitch charm bracelet class. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little hard to see there, but what we're gonna be making is a chain, the seed beads, and peyote, it's in a peyote stitch chain that goes straight down and back up. We'll go through it twice and then add charms at the end. And um, I've got another example to show here. And it's a really fun design. You can make multiple charms or you can use it as a way to hold a pendant. And what I like about this design is that it is strong. The chain that we're gonna to create today can support the weight of a large gemstone or a crystal. And so I think that's really handy for designers to have a delicate look, but that's got some strength to it. And it's still a stitch project. All right, so it looks like we've got everyone here. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my camera to show you the details. There you go. Okay, so here's the sample I was just holding up. And it's just a single pendant, a little frog charm. And I got a creative and added another little charm at the end. And so this project uses wire guardians to make this connection. Here's another example of a wire guardian connection with the lobster claw. And here's showing a version of the three charms. And this is the one that um, we'll try to do a version of today. The necklace version takes about 40 minutes to make. So we're going to do bracelet length today so I can get through. I want to be able to show everybody twice how to start and finish it. So, um, but what I do have handy is one more version that's a necklace length. It's just like the three charms. So you guys can see how that one's finished. Okay, so um, on that, I'm going to get started um, using the wildfire thread 0.006. And I'm cutting about 50 inches. Now that's a lot for, you know, the projects that I usually do. But because we're going to go back and forth through the necklace, if you're doing a necklace, like for a bracelet, you can cut less. But for a necklace, you'll want to do about 50 inches. So for me, I'm going to go a little shorter. So um, I'm going to show you guys the, the needle threading trick that works really nicely is if you have some chain nails or flat nose pliers handy, get those out and take the end of your thread and just go ahead and flatten it without pulling on it. Just give it a, a flat and then a, it'll, it'll really noticeably flatten and it'll make it very easy to thread your needle. And so I'm using a size 10 beading needle. I've got a couple here. Okay, threaded. Hold over about seven inches or so. And now you're going to want to leave a about a 10 inch tail pick up a stop bead. To make a stop bead, what you'll want to do is grab one seed bead, slide it down until it's about 10 inches from the bottom. If you're using one of the bead mats, it's about the length uh, of the, or sorry, the height of your bead mat would be perfect. And come back through the bead. Pull tight. There you go. So there's a stop bead. And it'll move if you try to pull on it, but it will hold our stitches in place for now. And 
And so I'm using, um, I'm going to find the tube and show you the colors. This one is called Sapphire. It's a size six seed bead mix that has a bunch of different sapphire blues in it. Really, really pretty. The black beads I'm using are size 11. And they are just a nice opaque, with kind of a little bit of a luster finish to them. Really nice. And in the beginning, you won't see them. These are added at the end, you know, step four, but they are um, delicates, Yuki delicates. And I'll be adding those in uh, step four. But they're kind of a neat addition. They add a lot of texture to the chain. Um, and let's see, in addition to that, that's all the beads. So I'll go ahead and start with the first step after the stop bead, which is to add one of the six O beads. Get one six O bead on there. And so now there's a pattern, and we're going to follow this pattern to the desired length of your bracelet, but it's to string three size 11s. And then you'll want to string um, a, a variation of 6, 11, 6, 11, and 6. And so that's one repeat. Three 11s, then a 6, and 11, a 6, and 11, and 6. And you'll do that as many times as you'd like for half of your length. So on my necklaces, it was 33 times to get this length. So you'll have to decide how long you'd like it to be. And then there's a little bit of a little way to help out here is to take a look at the length of, I'll show you the tape measure really quick. Each one of these repeats is going to give you a little over an inch and a half, I think. So for my bracelet, I only have to string this about seven times or so. So there's one repeat. I'm going to pick up three more 11s, one six, one 11, a six, an 11, and a six. So there's two repeats. Okay, three 11s, a six 11, six 11, six. And as we get going, you guys will see there's a lot of really fun variations you can do. This count is completely arbitrary. It was just one that I thought looked cute. You can create your own repeat with your own counts. And what looks cool to you, this technique will work with different iterations. Um, you can try out stuff and just see. I get new ideas every time I do this stitch, so I bet you guys will too. So there's one more. And if you ever lose count, especially on the really long ones, which happens to be a couple times with the necklaces, the easy way to recount it is just come back and count each of your sets of braids. So one, two, I'm up to number five. So I need to do two more for a bracelet length. Oops, sorry. Okay, there's that. Another cool thing to note about this is you can test the length and it's not going to shrink with the stitch we do on the way back. A lot of bead weaving, it's hard to tell, but with this one, the length will stay the same. So you can just wrap it around your wrist or hang it over your neck and see if it's long enough yet or if it's too long. So in my case, I'm gonna add, wanna add a little bit more. So that's about my midpoint, right? Yeah, so for me, that's half of my bracelet right there. I'm going to stop here so I can show you guys the rest. But if I was making a full length bracelet, I would keep going another seven times or so. Um, so we've just added, in my case, seven repeats. Um, and so the last step is to pick up three more 11s. Okay, there's one. And then you'll need one of the size sixes. String that. And now we're going to bring the delicates in. So 
Okay, so after the six, you'll pick up one more of those 11s and then pick up a size 11 delicate. And if you're not using delicates, that's totally fine. If you want to bring a contrasting color in as another 11, it will still work. Okay, and down here. And at this point, you'll want a wire guardian. So go through your wire guardian. And come around. Let's see if I can pick this up. There we go. Something I do with wire guardians is I pinch them between my forefinger and thumb while I'm pulling the thread through, and it keeps the thread in the well of the wire guardian. So a handy trick, when, especially when you're working with really long thread. And so I just picked up another Delica and another size 11. And I'm going to go back through the size 6 bead. And I'm just coming out through the six. Okay, and when you pull tight, what will happen is the 11s and the delicates will sit side by side with the wire guardian on top. And I just thought that looked kind of cool. Um, and so the next thing you're going to want to do is pick up an 11 and then a delica and an 11. And we're going to start building them into these little spaces here. Since you're going to sit, each of these additions is going to sit next to the three elevens. But I want to reinforce this before I go all that length back. So imagine if you were doing a really long necklace, um, you wouldn't want to have to stitch all the way back up or add thread or tie in or tie off to be able to reinforce your guardian. So a cool way to just get it done now is to go back through these elevens here. So I'm going to go through in the other direction. So heading in the direction of my wire guardian, going back through all three of those 11s, and then pull tight. Oops, sorry, moved a little bit. And what you'll see happen is the new edition of the 11 Delica 11 should sit right next to those three. And you'll see that my, my space is moving here. If that happens to you, don't worry about it. You can tighten up the stop bead at the other side and it should be fine. And one reason that we start with a stop bead is when you get a really long chain going, what you'll get is a bunch of kinks and bunches as you're stitching. And when you get to the end of your necklace or bracelet, you can loosen or tighten here at the end of the stop bead to make it flowy and smooth so that it lays just like it's one piece, not something that you stitch through twice. So I'll show you guys more about that when we get back to that side. Um, but so I've just gone through this six and the 11, the Delica and the Wire Guardian on one side. I need to come back down. So I'm going back down through on the other side. And for now, I'm just going to exit from the six. So I'm going to have, I'm going to, have to line it up a little bit. And then again, I'm pinching the well the well of the wire guardian so that the thread stays in the well. Okay, so now I've exited from the six. I'm gonna go back through the 11, Delica 11 combo that I added. There we go. So tiny. And if you wanted to, you could you could loop through that again. I'm gonna keep going. I found that that's actually strong enough. Another thing you could do if you wanted to reinforce it but not go through those same beads again is repeat what we have did up here with this section. And on a longer necklace that's going to have weight, I would recommend doing that. But what I did here is I just picked up the 11 and the Delica 11 and the 11 going through all three of these beads. So the three sixes with those 11s in between and exiting from that last six. And go down this way. Now in the instructions, it gives instructions to keep going. If you were building the full length necklace, you'd go through this process 13 times. And that would give you a stopping point that puts three of these charms at the bottom of the chain. 
So you would build the repeat 13 times before adding the charm loop. Um, and on this one, that number was 15, just to add a single charm. Okay. My bracelet, I'm probably going to only do one more of these and then I'll be ready to show that step. But I'm going to show this one more time. So this is the 11, double cut of 11. And go down through the six. Next one from the six here. Okay. So let's say I'm ready to add the charm. The charm loop is made by picking up an 11, Delica, and then you're going to want to add eight 11s. I've only got seven on the mat here, so I'm going to pick up a little more. One more. Okay. Delica, 11. So that's a combo of 11 Delica. Eight elevens, double count, and an eleven. Now, what you want to do is skip your next group of three elevens, three sixes, and three elevens, and go through the next set of three sixes. So I skipped these sections here. And so there's a charm loop. And if you're making the necklace version, you would do that three times. So on this version here, I'll show you. Just for a sec. Did this one. Then you would go through those three like we did. Come out, add another one, go through three sixes. Go through three sixes. So put that here. And it's up to you. If you'd like, you could add the charm now. I usually add it at the end. I just open a jump ring and put it on that loop. But if you had a charm, for example, that didn't have a jump ring, you'd want to add it before going through the sixes. OK. And so if you'd like to reinforce this loop, which I, I recommend doing that, I'm going to show you how to reinforce that. So pick up your next you know, combo of three elevens there. And do what we did before and make a turn. So normally I would go through these three sixes. That would be my next step. But I'm going to turn and go back through these three. And then I'm going to just continue all the way back. I'm exiting the six for now. But my plan is to go ahead and continue all the way through this loop over here. So move these beads out of the way. There we go. All right, so that's me from the six here. I'm going to go through all of these. And now I'm continuing through three sixes with the 11s in between them. Going through all of those. And I'm going to make that turn again. And to make that turn, I'm going to use these sets. And it doesn't matter which one you come up through first. Just choose a side, go through. Sorry about that. I'm going to turn it so it's easier for me to see. There we go. All right, up through one side and then turn and go back through the side. Okay, and so now I'm gonna go through all the sixes. And you can either go through the charm loop or through this one. I'm going to hang my charm on that, so I'm going to go through that one more time. Okay. 
And so you can see as you do that, it kind of scrunches up a lot. That's why having this movable end is handy because then I can make it be completely flat. And it gives you the ability to straighten it out as you're working. So you get this nice flowy chain. Okay. And so I had done a turn here. So my goal is to come back through these sixes, go through this set, and then continue on. So I'm exiting from a six here. I'm turn and go through this tiny little 11. There we go. And through these three. So I've gone through the rest of the combo here that I had and through that set that just happened. Hold tight. And keep going through the next three sixes that are here. All right. And then I'm going to pick up one more of those combos where there's an 11, a delica, and an 11. Go through those next three. All right. So that's the last um, set that I had that's before adding the class. So now we're going to get to that part. So I'm going to pick up a one more combo of 11, Delica 11. Go through the size 6 bead. And now I'm going to remove the stop bead. Remember when we started, we had a stop bead at that end. So I'm going to pull that off. And this is one more opportunity to kind of get the tighten it, but not too tight such that it would cinch up. But that looks about right to me. There we go. Okay, so the next step, I'm going to need a few more delicos. Get those. And I'm going to need a wire guardian. So I'll pick up an 11 and a delica. Go through my wire guardian. Coming down. And then another Delica and an 11. Go through that size six bead. Oops. That's what I forgot to do for this. I forgot to go through the wire guardian. All right, fixing that. So I'm going back through the six here. And I'm gonna remove the 11 and the Delica. And see what I forgot to do is I didn't go through that side of the wire guardian first. Okay. Again, I'm pinching it to keep the thread in the well. And I keep pulling so it'll tighten up at the top here. There we go. And then there's those beads again, the 11 and the delta. And now go through the six. And just like before, it should, oh, look what I did. I put them like a checkerboard. <laughs> I kind of like it though, I'm gonna leave it. I was supposed to put the, uh, the Delica first and then the 11 when I came down through the six. Okay, so to reinforce that, you wanna make that same turn that we did before where you use the segment with the two side-by-side -side stacks to make a turn. So let me come down through whichever side, it doesn't matter which one. See if it goes three. Oops. It's still pretty loose, and I've got my tail in the way, so that's okay. I'm going to thread a needle onto my tail because my the original chain just pulled out. So I'm going back through the six here. And I went through those beads. I'm gonna reinforce the wire guardian with both of these strands. So it's an easy way to use the tail to get a third pass through it. Okay, that's that one.
Okay. So this is my tail thread. I went around the wire guardian and through one of the sides here. So now I'm going to go through this other side. I, I took this one down through that side. I'm going to go through the other stack. So now both threads are exiting from the bottom there. I'm going to use this one to turn. And so on this side, you have the extra tail to work with. It doesn't matter which side you use to make this reinforcing connection. You can do the working thread or the tail thread, whichever you like. You'll have 10 inches to play with, so it's handy to have that. Okay, so I'm going through the wire guardian one last time. And then through those beads and through the six. And all we have left to do now is just weave in our thread. There we go. That's what I usually do for weaving in. There's a couple options. You can tie half inch knots in front of the 11s after you've woven and changed direction a few times. I, I don't actually tie the knots myself. Um, I just go through and change direction three times with each of my strands. So I would go down to this one and turn, go down to this one and turn. And that usually is, is plenty of weaving in. But I'm also being careful not to make it tight. So as you're doing your, your weaving in and your pulling, especially with those turns, do it gently. And as you're working, lay it flat and give it another just kind of adjustment. That way you won't get any kinks or little turns. So turning through here. I'm going back down. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and trim here at the bottom of this size six seed bead. If you wanted to, you could tie half inch knots in front of the 11s and then go through the six and trim. That would be totally fine to do. I always find when I do that, my tension gets wonky, so I prefer to just weave in, but. Okay, so I have one more strand to weave in, same thing. I don't want to use the same section, so I'm going to go all the way down to the center section here. Going through all those. Beads is just a little tight. Give me one second. Ah, I think I got it. Okay. And if you get a tight bead, I always say don't force it, but then I go and do the opposite. <laughs> but sometimes it can also help just to switch down to a size 12 needle. Uh, on these stretches where you have multiple passes through the same size 11s, occasionally you may want to use a 12 if you've got one. And if not, just give it a go, see. Usually they'll pull through. Okay. So got to the other side, and I'm gonna go ahead and just trim here. And then a tight one. And so I'm pushing down with the scissors and pulling up with a thread. And so there's a really tiny bracelet done, but that's the whole stitch. That's all you gotta do. Um, one of the cooler things about using it as a pendant, like I did on this one, is these three size six seed beads will lay in front. They'll lay in front of the jump ring. I'm gonna try to bring this down and show you guys. Um, here he is, okay. So on this one that I made the other day, it. There's a jump ring behind there. It's what you're seeing is it's hanging on this strand. 
But when you're wearing it, what you see is the charm kind of suspended behind these really beautiful size sixes. So it almost looks like it's floating there. So that's one little cool way to picture it. I'm gonna go ahead and get a charm. Just quickly throwing a charm on here to show you what I mean. Throwing a cute one in here. Most of these charms, they actually come with their own jump rings, which is really handy. I lost this one, so I'm grabbing one from my pack. I've been playing with all the new, the new charms from the charm section, and there are some real cute ones. For jump rings, I always use flat nose and bent nose. Everybody's got their own style here. It's just what I like to do. But I like the flat nose because they hold the jump ring in place almost the entire side of it so that it holds its shape. And then I take the bent nose and just open, laterally open, jump right here. And place it over that row or that loop and then close it. Okay. So when you're wearing this, it will look like that. A really neat little style and then up here we just use the same process to attach jump rings and the clasp of your choice and so we're doing really good on time go through again yeah that's carmy hey carmy i, I want to let you know you are doing great on time and we did have a couple people arrive late so they're grateful you're going to demonstrate it a second time Awesome. And I wanted to let you know, everyone's loving how you're using the guardians, the wire guardians. So oh, awesome. that's been a great, uh, well-received tip tonight. Yay, I'm glad. I, I like using them too. They're really fun. I'm wondering, should I do the same colors again? Or was there any color that was problematic to see? Should I switch it out? Or I was wondering about these mostly. They yeah, they're okay. a little, you can see them. You can see them? Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and just do the same colors again, since they're here, why not? Um, let's see, so I'm using Wildfire Thread and it's in the 0.06. And so I'm gonna cut a shorter length for me, but at home, if you're making the necklace, 50 inches is a good length. And so I've cut the thread and I'm gonna go ahead and use um, chain nose pliers to flatten one of the ends. So it'll be a little easier to get through a needle. Grab a needle here. And I'm bending down less than this, but Bending down about seven inches of thread is, is a good amount to do. And so for the first step, you're going to want to create a stop bead. And so to create a stop bead, you want to just pick up a size 11 bead, bring it down to where you have a 10 inch tail. So use your mat, the height of your mat is close enough. It's a little more, but um, that's usually what I do. Come back through that same bead. Oops, my tail escaped. And um, we measure that. There we go. And create a stop bead just by pulling. See how it's almost knotted in there. Just gonna kind of pull it down. Okay. And that's pretty tight and it will hold our stitches in place, but has the benefit of being movable. So when you get to that point where you're wanting to straighten out the chain a little bit, really nice, you can slide that around. And so the first step would be to pick up one of the size six seed beads. Slide that down. And then we're gonna start building repeats of three elevens spaced by these little six, 11, six, 11, six combos. So that's one repeat. And if you're looking through the handout, it'll have you repeat that a certain number of times depending on what you're making. So for the full length necklace, that was about 33 times. 
And I was gonna show you guys one more thing that I just remembered to talk about. Why the odd number? Well, if you wanted to have a center, it'll need an odd number. So you'll need 33 or 31 or, you know, 35. Um, if you're making a bracelet, stick with the sevens and the nines. If you start doing, you know, other multiples, you'll get a thing where there's two off center, unless that's the design goal that you have, of having it look like that. If you do an even number, that would be your center. So hopefully that to help somebody um, with your design choice. And so I'm picking up another repeat. There's that. And given that it's 336, I'm wondering, I could make a full length one. The last one I made wasn't a full length one. I was worried about time, so I shortened it. But given how well we're doing, I could just go ahead and try to make a full length bracelet. So I'm going to do that. That would mean for me probably between 12 and 14 repeats. So I'm going to go, let's see, three more here. I'll do that really fast. If anyone has any questions while I'm loading this, I can ask that. Oh, that one's, here we go. And in case anyone missed the beginning, the colors that I'm using, this is the Sapphire mix in size six. And this is just opaque black in 11. And this is a turquoise. This is the greener one. There's two different turquoises in the Delicas. I love them both. This one is the turquoise green. Two, three. OK. You'll find this goes really fast. And if you lose count, I'll just come back and count these sections. They're, they're spaced by three smaller beads, so they're easy to count as you're, and easy to spot as you're looking at it. And let's see, what else? To, oh, another thought about that is, so this iteration here, you can change that up if you want to. Then when you're building the, the back pass in the peyote chain, you would just match what you're doing here. So offset from each other. So for example, if you wanted to do four size 11s, then you just do four size 11s on the way back, something like that, maybe with an 11, two delicas and 11. So there's other ways you can personalize. Um, designs like this have no limitations. Um, this iteration with the three size sixes, you could do four or five, whatever looked good to you. So I'm just sitting and just kind of playing with what looks good to your eye. It'd be fun. That's how I come up with these things. Okay, so there's three more here. I'm just making repeats of sets here. And we were we did a measure actually at the start of the last one, so I, I should do that again. A um, little more than half an inch will be added by each section. So I'm at eight right now. Add a few more. Oh, and another thing that's very awesome about this design is if you miscount, you reach the end, because we just have a stop bead. You can pull that off and fix problems. So that's something that it can actually save you if you change your mind about where you want to charm position or you need an extra spot to make it even. You can even it up at the end. Um, so I've got, I've got nine on there. So I think not quite a bracelet, but one or two more and it will be. And uh, another thing is it won't stretch, so you can always test it just to see if that fit. Yeah, I'll, I'm liking that. Okay, so there's a pretty good bracelet for me. I'm going to make sure I've got an odd count because I want it to have a center charm. 
Um, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got 11, yeah. Good, okay, so for the last thing you wanna do after you've built the link that you want is we're gonna need to do the wire guardian, attaching that at the end um, and making it match this. So pick up three size 11s, another six, bring that down. And then pick up one 11 and one Delica bead. And then you'll need a wire guardian. So go through that. And then turn and go through the wire guardian one more time. Pinching it so that my thread stays in the well. There we go. And then I need a Delica and I need a size 11. And then go back through the six. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna build my first peyote. Um, in, this, in this design, we're actually treating these three beads as like an up bead. And we're stitching into, the, into each of the up beads with each repeat. Um, what I would normally do is go this way, right? I would go down through these three and these guys would sit in between. So that's an 11, a Delica, an 11. But because I want a, ch ch sorry, a chance to reinforce this wire guardian before having to go all the way through the chain and all the way back is I'm going to turn and go through those three in the other direction so I can get another pass through here. So I'm going back up through those first three that, and through the six and if I can I'm going to try to just go all the way through and I was able to do that. If it's too tight and you need to come out from one bead and then go back through it, it works too. Going around the wire guardian through the Delica and the 11 and the six, if it will let me. Yep, got that. There we go. Okay, so now I'm exiting from the six. I reinforced that two times. And I go ahead and continue through that segment I just added. You could go through these three too, but one of the reasons I like to go through the one that we used here to loop is it's still sitting to kind of, kind of to the side. If you go through it and bring it through these sixes, it'll tighten up. So going through those three. And then through the six, 11, six, 11 combination here, kind of treating that just like one bead. Just like in peyote stitch, it's just my one up bead. Maybe we could call it the three drop peyote. And so there's one end that's finished. And so all that's left to do is to build sets of 11 Delica 11 in between each of these sections. But before I do that, since I haven't worked with this link before, I want to have one with three, because you remember we just did one here. And so other one, I want to set it up so I can show you how to do the three. So I'm going to figure out where I want it to be. So lining up my sixes at the end. My other wire guardian will be here. If I want my charms to chain, charms to hang here, here, and there, then I'm going to want to go through only two of these before I start making my charms. So charm loops, sorry. Um, so I'm picking up one of those repeats of 11, Delica 11, going through the next set of three sixes, like my upbeat, going through those. And then I'm going to see one more, just like that. And I believe that is right where I want to be to start the first charm loop. I'm going to test that one more time. Yeah, so one here, one here, one here. So to do those loops, pick up one 11 and one Delica and then eight 11s. After the eight 11s, pick up another Delica and another 11. And then you'll want to skip the three 11s, three sixes combo there, and another set of three 11s. And then go through the 
next six is. So just through there like that. So there's one loop done. I'm going to repeat that again. An 11, a delicate, eight 11s. Delica and an 11. And then skipping this set, going through the next six. And all those beads after it there, exiting from that third six. All right. And then I'm just gonna check my layout one more time, make sure I got that right. Yeah, I like it. So my loops are going to be here. And they don't have to be symmetrical. You can always just have them be organic looking. That's really great too. Okay, and there's that one. And again, I'm going to skip, um, I'm going to skip these three, these three and these three and go through this one. Okay. All right. And so moving it over here so it's easier for me to get those last combos here. There's three. I'm going to need more 11s here. There you go. So one, one, and one. There's a delicate in between two 11s. And I'm going through the next three. So I'm skipping these, going through the next three sixes. Okay. One delica left, perfect. Okay, oops, that's a small one there. And the same thing here, I'm gonna go through the next sixes. And I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to need more delicas. I'm going through the beads today. Okay, so when you get to this last section here, go through the last six. Through there. And I'm going to remove the stop bead now. That was the one we had on the tail thread when we started. To remove the stop bead, just pinch it and pull, and it'll come right off. And now I use this as a chance to kind of flatten out and make sure that not too tight and not too loose. So I'm actually pulling apart the tail thread and the working thread here, making it fit. And if it looks good, then go ahead and start adding the next step is to add the wire guardian. So let's see, I'm gonna find a few more of those floating here. I replaced, uh, misplaced my scissors. <laughs> There's only so many places that could have gone. Let me see here. Ah, got them. <laughs> I'm gonna borrow a wire guardian from over here. Okay, so adding the wire guardian, you want to pick up one eleven and then one delica and go through the wire guardian one side and then come down the other side. Don't forget that part like I did last time. <laughs> there we go. And then you want to pick up a delica and then an eleven. And then just go down through that size 60 bead. And they should sit side by side when you do that. 
So there's the other end. And so now to reinforce that connection, um, on this side, we have the advantage of having a tail thread. So I only have to go through with either thread or I can go through it with both threads and have a three reinforcement. Right now I've gone down through one side of that next set. I'm using places where I have stacks of two to make a turn. So going back up through here. All the way through the six, through the 11 and the Delica. If it will let me go through all those at once, I'll go for it. Through the Rite of Guardian. There we go. And I'm going to loop around the other side of that Wire Guardian and go through all those beads. So it let me go through the six right there. I'm going to go through the next few beads to get down in the bracelet a little further away from this connection here. And I'm going to just weave in this side. And we'll do the same with the tail. So right now I'm just traveling down. Okay, so now I'm out of the bottom of one of these sixes. It looks like I went through an 11, so I'm just going to continue through here. And now since I'm making a bracelet, if I wanted to, I could reinforce my loops. I didn't do that with this one. There's, um, when you're making the really long necklace, you can do one of these turns. And I think we did that on, on this first one to reinforce each of these. But since I'm doing a bracelet and I have tons of thread, I figured I could just go through it. And I might just decide to do that with this one if it will reach, yeah, looks good, okay. So to do that, all you'd wanna do is just go through, just treat it like a single strand and just go through all of those and then continue through the six sets. So lots of different ways to do the same thing. <laughs> kind of de describes beating a little bit. Um, continuing through here. through one more here. Okay, I'm out through the bottom of the sixes on the other side. And to weave in, I think what I'll do is I'll just loop through here and then go through one more and trim. So I'm going through that one side. Now I'm changing direction, going back the other way. I'm going to do that again. All right, all right through there. And one more time through this one. So you can see on a bracelet link that's easy to do your reinforcing is kind of the last step, but if this was the full length necklace, you could do the way, um, the way the handout describes, which is doing this turn, which is exactly what I'm doing now, but doing that before heading back up the other side. All right, there's that side. I'm gonna trim here. And now all I have left to deal with is the tail thread. And we saw how are we doing on time? Oh, we're really actually really tight on time. So what I'm gonna do is just show you throwing three charms on here really quick. I felt like I had tons of time and then I looked up and it was 3.55. So, um, well, what, basically what you do is you would add any charms you like by opening a jump ring and just placing them anywhere on the bracelet that you like in any order you like. 
And another really great thing about it is, is it's swappable. So you can change your mind later and pull a charm off and add a different one. So the sky's the limit on that. Is there anything anyone else wants to see? Oh, yes. <laughs> I just saw Kirby's coming. Yes. For me, it is 3.55. I am in Seattle. I forget. Not everyone is with me in the same, in the same place. Yes, Danielle, you're not getting too much sympathy <laughs> because it's Wednesday morning in Melbourne. <laughs> oh, it is Wednesday morning? I always get confused with the dates going with where the date line is. I have to look that up every time. Um, Danielle, uh, the class has been well understood and uh, yeah. people definitely understand the technique. So I think you, you probably have just enough time to encourage everyone to see us here Tuesday night next week. Ah, yeah, let me switch back to another camera. Yeah, that felt like a time warp. The first one, I was like, whoa, that was really fast. And then, yeah. <laughs> so um, let's see, I'm gonna start with, we're gonna do on the November 3rd, give me a beaded candle holder. And let me turn it on so you guys can see the, the glow. It's a really easy project. Um, it's beginner friendly and you can make it in any color. My favorite thing to do is just grab a 6-0 mix. And a cool thing about these is this is exactly one tube. Give or take a beat or two, this is exactly one tube of size 6 mix. You'll be able to make the entire votive with that. So that's just an easy grab the red, grab needle, grab the beads and you've got it. And the votives, um, they're called flameless votives and they're at Michael's in the candle section. Um, then the next class, one of my favorites is flat chenille stitch. And flat chenille is easy. I know everyone says, oh, it's so hard. It's not. It is one of the most fun and it's very intricate and versatile. Um, you can turn one stitch into about three different variations of a design. And I'm going to go through that with you guys. That'll be a really fun class. And you have to come because it's on my birthday. So you got to come. Um, and then the class after that is beaded garlands. We're going to be doing everything from tassel making to knotting with wax linen. It's going to be really organic and fun. Um, this is another class where you'll use exactly one tube of beads. So this version has four in every, um, I called them kernels while I was making this because it looked like corn kernels to me, but um, each kernel, kernel of these has four strands going through it. But there's a two strand version and the two strand version is just as long. I have one here actually. And it will end up being exactly one tube of beads to make this length. So depending what you want to do, or you could grab two tubes and make this length with two tubes and have four kernels going on that. So yeah, so fun, fun little look there. Then I thought, well, we're going to need some earrings to go with our bracelet. So these to me look like little wreaths and they're stitched onto some hoops. And I used the owl charms from the Charmalongs um, brand and it's got size six, size 11 and size eight. So using every size of beads and we'll do a multiple layered brick stitch for that. So relaxing and fun, personalizable. And that, that's everything. Anybody have any questions about the projects? No, I think great. You're getting your usual end of class, uh, wonderful comments. They love the class and many thanks. So let's just hope we see everybody uh, next Tuesday because I think the beaded votives are the first time we're showing the beads being used for something other than jewelry. Yep, yeah, exactly. So we'll see, see you guys for then. And um, I'm wishing you a great rest of your week. And on behalf of John Bede and Michaels, thank you for joining us tonight.